Hey there folks, good to have you joining me in this demo where we're going to go ahead and set up your first Azure DevOps account. Now to follow along, it does help to already be logged into your Azure subscription because the subscription is what's going to be used for payments for Azure DevOps. But don't worry, we'll be setting up a free Azure DevOps account and I'll also introduce you to a request form that you can submit to Microsoft to get some additional free resources. So if you haven't already, go ahead and log into the Azure portal. And then what you can do is you can open a new tab and you can navigate to this page here and I'll include a link within the description below. So it can sometimes be a bit confusing to get to the actual Azure DevOps login and I'll show you the different ways to do that a little bit later on. But what we want to do is we want to come to this page after we've already logged into our Azure subscription and then we can click on the start free option here. You'll see straight away it's opening up a range of different URLs and these are some areas that you can get quite confused on. Actually, straight away we're seeing the aex.dev.azure.com URL and I'll include that linked within the description below because this is a handy URL to go to if you're having trouble accessing your organization even after you've set up Azure DevOps for the first time. But normally what's going to happen is once we set up Azure DevOps, we will log in at dev.azure.com slash the organization name that you set up. Because remember for Azure DevOps, to actually use this service, we're going to create an organization and then we're going to create a project within that. Okay, so after you've clicked that link or you've managed to come to the aex.dev.azure.com site and you have authenticated using your Azure credentials, we can go ahead and get started. Now I will mention you can actually use just a Microsoft account as well, but I would encourage you to actually use your free Azure subscription that you should have set up with the earlier content. So you can go ahead first and choose your region. For me, that's going to be Australia, right down here toward the bottom. I'm gonna leave the tick box off there for any offers and newsletters and go ahead and click on continue. Now you'll see straight away what I was talking about a moment ago. I can go ahead and I can create a name for my organization. And that name is going to influence the URL that myself and any other of my Azure DevOps users would be going to to access this service. So for me, I'm going to call that Aussie Mart, and we'll say that we want to host our projects within Australia East. Now, we do need to make sure I'm not a robot, even though I'm probably gonna fail this, so let's give that a try, KJSD, TK6Y. What do you think, have I got that correct? Okay, it's looking good. So we've gone ahead now, we've set up our first Azure DevOps organization. This can sometimes take a little bit of time to load there, so definitely do be patient. But once that does load, we can go ahead next and get started with our project. Okay, so straight away, you're going to see that Microsoft is already saying we need a project to get started. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a project and give that a name of Aussie Mart hyphen stores. And we'll just keep that nice and simple. Okay, now I'm gonna leave this as private because you will see that by default, the public feature is disabled for an organization once you create it. But if we did want public, we could go ahead and modify those settings. All right, we've got everything ready to go. Let's go ahead and click on create project. Now that you're logged in, straight away, you're going to see that you've got your project summary page and you've got all of the different products that we spoke about. So we could straight away go into repositories. We could go ahead and use this as our remote repository instead of perhaps GitHub. We could synchronize any local repositories we've got up to this remote repository, or we could even just use something else. We've got pipelines, which is where we are going to go to actually create our build and our release pipelines. We've got artifacts where we can store a range of different packages from upstream providers, NuGet, NPM, things of that nature. And we've got the other products that we spoke about as well, such as boards for managing the tasks, the sprints, the backlogs, and all of the different associated work items for our software delivery lifecycle. Now, what's really important at this stage is to understand that even though this is currently a free account, we do actually want to have some resources that are commonly paid for, and that's within the pipeline section here. When we're going to perform any tasks throughout our pipeline, we need to have some resources, some compute capacity, that's actually going to execute those tasks for us. So what we actually want to do is we want to browse back to Aussie Mart, which will be our organization. And you can see down the bottom, we've got organization settings. Now, whenever you're working within the settings of Azure DevOps, just bear in mind, you've got your organization settings that apply commonly to all of the projects in your org. And you also have project specific settings if you are currently in a project. So if you want to go ahead, for example, and change the time, I might type UTC plus 10, for example, for my area of the world, and go ahead and choose save. We can make a range of different changes here that is going to affect our environment. 
A couple of other important things here, if you go to billing, you'll see that that will be associated with your Azure subscription that you have connected to. And if we go to Azure Active Directory, you'll see this is associated with the Azure AD tenant that I signed in with. If you've used a Microsoft account, you can come here and actually change the settings and attach this organization to an Azure AD tenant. Now, what I want to call out with respect to pipelines is that on the left-hand side here, you'll see we've got this option for agent pools. By default, we'll have two that have been created for us. We've got Azure pipelines, which is something that is going to be Microsoft hosted resources, or we've actually got the default pipelines, which is where we can go ahead and configure our own self-hosted agents that can provide that execution environment for our pipeline tasks. Now, really importantly, if you want to get access to free tier capacity for your Azure DevOps environment, what you want to do is take a look at the parallel jobs on the left hand side. This name can be a little bit confusing at times, but with parallel jobs, we're talking about that compute capacity that's going to go and run your Azure pipelines, build and deploy operations. So if you browse into parallel jobs and you see zero here and you don't see any mention of the Microsoft free tier, then understand that you currently are going to have to pay for capacity. And yes, you definitely can set up your own virtual machine in your own Azure environment to go and run your tasks. That's one option to get up and running. But if you do submit a form to Microsoft, you can in fact actually get the free tier capacity here as well. So that's what I wanted to call out right now, because what I would recommend you do is open up a new tab and go to the link that I've included within the description for this demo. You can navigate to the As Pipelines Parallelism Request Form, and then you'll see you can complete a Microsoft form that is going to be submitted to Microsoft to actually allow you to get that free capacity. So to help keep costs low for future demonstrations, you can enter in your name, your email address, you'll see you can include the organization that we have just created, and then you can go and say that you want this for private projects. Go ahead, click on Submit, and you will need to wait some time for Microsoft to respond, but then eventually you should see now the free tier here that allows you to get access to that. Now, if you want to continue with further work on the pipelines and you haven't yet heard back from Microsoft or you haven't been approved, I will provide a separate demo that walks through how to set up a self-hosted agent instead. All right, everybody, so that's all I wanted to cover within this getting started demonstration. You've now got your own Azure DevOps organization configured. You've got a project, and hopefully you will have gone through the steps of requesting the free tier for parallel jobs. Thanks for joining me, folks. That's a wrap.